This LOS is explain how swap contracts are similar to, but different from, a series of forward contracts. So now we're moving into the pricing and valuation of swap contracts. A swap is in some sense a series of forward contracts, specifically a set of contracts expiring at various times in which one party agrees to make a fixed payment and receive a variable payment. Now consider the next slide where we're going to break down a swap into a series of implicit forward contracts with the expiration of each forward contract corresponding to a swap payment date. For a swap, all the fixed payments are equal. So how can we equate a swap to a series of forward contracts? It turns out that we can, and in doing so, we recall a valuable point about forward pricing. Valuation of the swap during its life, again, appeals to replication and the principle of no arbitrage. We will find a way to reproduce the remaining payments on the swap with other transactions. The value of the strategy is the value of the swap. So to replicate a swap with zero value at initiation, the present value, the present values of off-market FRAs must sum to zero. The swap price is the fixed rate, and the swap value is positive if expected short-term rates increase, negative if short-term rates decrease. What this slide is showing is how a swap agreement can be compared to a series of forwards. Now recall, a swap agreement is a series of cash flows. So in this little example that we're showing, uh, the fixed rate is always going to be known for the swap. Uh, that's the, uh, you know, long on the fixed. And the floating rate is going to be unknown. So in this example, there's three payments at T1, T2, and T3. So we'd be looking at the difference between the spot rate at time one, spot rate at time two, and spot rate at time three versus the forward rate, uh, sorry, the uh, fixed rate that was agreed to in the swap. So the fixed rate is known in the swap, and the floating rate is obviously the unknown, okay? Now, with a forward rate agreement, remember, there's only one payoff for a forward rate agreement, and that's the difference, okay? So if you're looking at a swap, you can see here, it's a series of three payments. So what they're comparing it to would be then three forwards. Here's the first forward, where we have a fixed uh, rate, uh, to agree to pay a fixed rate at uh, time T1 and receive S1. Here's the second forward, where you're agreeing to pay uh, a fixed rate at time 2 and receive spot 2. And here's the third forward, where you're agreeing to pay the fixed rate at time th uh, T3 and receive the, the S3, okay? So for a swap, uh, all the payments are equal, they are known. So uh, for CFA level one, we're not having to do many calculations in terms of the pricing and valuation and getting into the math. We get into that in a big way in CFA level two. For CFA level one, it's just saying that a swap is a series of payments where the fixed payment is known and the floating payment is unknown. And you could compare that to a series of forwards, forward rate agreement one, forward rate agreement two, forward rate agreement three, that only have one payoff, okay? So what it moves up to in CFA level two is saying that um, the, uh, how we do the pricing and the valuation over the life as a, of a swap. This slide has a few bullet points with regards to swaps. So at the start of a swap, the market value is set to zero, same as with a forward. The process of pricing the swap, uh, getting the interest rate for the fixed rate, uh, involves finding the terms that force the market value to zero. To determine the market value of a swap, we replicate the swap using other instruments that produce the same cash flows. The fixed rate on an interest rate swap equates the present value of the fixed payments plus a hypothetical notional principle to the present value of the floating payments plus a hypothetical notional principle. The notional principle is offset, but permit these swaps to be treated like bonds. The fixed rate is then equivalent to the fixed rate on a par bond with the same payments as on the swap. The market value of the swap during its life is found by determining the difference in the market values of the floating and fixed rate bonds later during their lives under the new term structure. Now don't worry about that a little bit. Those last two bullet points, in fact, um, are more important in CFA level two than they are in level one. But it, it's there, uh, nice to know, not exactly a need to know.
So we're just gonna finish this LOS with two quick practice questions. The first one, a swap is equivalent to a series of A, forward contracts each created at the swap price, B, long forward contracts matched with short futures contracts, or C, forward contracts each created at their appropriate forward prices. So the correct answer is A, a swap is equivalent to a series of forward contracts each created at the swap price. Each implicit forward contract is said to be off market because it is created at the swap price, not the appropriate forward price, which would be the price created in the forward market, okay? So that's an important uh, uh, fact to know. And one last practice question to finish this LOS. If the present value of the payments in a forward contract or swap is not zero, which of the following is most likely to be true? A, the contract cannot legally be created. B, the contract must be replicated by another contract with zero value. Or C, the parties whose stream of payments to be received is greater has to pay the other party the present value difference. C is correct. The parties whose stream of payments to be received is greater has to pay the other party the present value difference. Such a contract can legally be created, but the party receiving the greater present value must compensate the other party with a cash payment at the start. Replication is never required. And that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.